Japan, while you were sleeping peacefully this morning, something very significant happened across the border. At 7 hours, 58 minutes, and 15 seconds in the morning of today, January 2nd, 2026, the earth shook forcefully in Guerrero, Mexico. We're talking about an earthquake of magnitude 6.5 on the moment magnitude scale, with its epicenter just 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers, southwest of San Marcos. Look, when I discovered that the depth was only 3.1 miles, 5 kilometers, I understood why things were so intense. To give you an idea, Mexico's president, Claudia Sheinbaum, was giving her morning press conference at the National Palace when the seismic alert began to sound. And it wasn't just any alert. The entire Mexico City felt this movement. Thousands of people evacuated buildings. And the president had to interrupt everything and rush out to the palace courtyards. Now, you might be thinking, like, just another earthquake in Mexico, right? But let me explain why this specific event has scientists so attentive and why you need to understand what's happening there. What makes this earthquake particularly concerning isn't just the magnitude itself, but exactly where it happened. The San Marcos region sits right in the heart of what geologists call the Guerrero Gap. And look, this gap is like a geological time bomb that scientists monitor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. According to Mexico's National Seismological Service, minutes after the main tremor of 6.5 came an aftershock of magnitude 4.2. And before you ask if there were casualties, as of now, thank God, Guerrero's civil protection authorities have not reported loss of life or serious structural damage. Guerrero's governor, Evelyn Salgado, has already convened the state civil protection council, and teams are sweeping through affected areas. But you know what caught my attention most when I started investigating this event? It was discovering that this isn't an isolated earthquake. It's not like those random events that happen and that's it. Done. This tremor is part of a much larger and much more concerning pattern that's been developing for years in this region. The user prompt is empty, so I cannot provide a summary. I need to continue the translation carefully, making sure to convert all measurements, spell out all numbers, replace Richter with moment magnitude scale. Avoid words like death, deadly mortal. Keep it as running text without headers. Well, let me continue. Let me tell you a story that'll give you chills. March 28th, 1787. It was a normal morning in colonial Mexico when suddenly the earth literally split in half. An earthquake of magnitude 8.6, the largest ever recorded in the history of what we now know as Mexico, devastated the coasts of Oaxaca and Guerrero. And look, it wasn't just the earthquake itself. The movement was so violent that it generated a tsunami that advanced 3.7 miles, 6 kilometers inland. 3.7 miles, man. Imagine the force necessary to push the ocean into the continent for that distance. Now comes the part that keeps scientists up at night. In 2009, the Center for Seismic Instrumentation and Recording conducted a detailed study about that event from 1787. You know what they discovered? that earthquakes of that magnitude happen in this region every 300 to 600 years. And look, how long has it been since that earthquake? 239 years. And there's more. The famous Guerrero Gap hasn't registered an earthquake greater than magnitude 7 for more than 106 years. That's a long time, man. A really long time. Carlos Valdez Gonzalez, who was director of the National Seismological Service and is a researcher at UNAM's Institute of Geophysics, recently explained that the return time between large earthquakes in the same segment of the Mexican subduction zone runs around 30 to 60 years. So when you have a 106 years without a significant event, this far exceeds the expected periodicity. That's why so many scientists are worried about this region. And look, there's an interesting theory that some researchers have raised. They believe what they call slow slip events might be happening in the Guerrero Gap which are movements of the tectonic plates, so gradual they go unnoticed, like a turtle crawling for months instead of a sudden movement. If this is true, it might be that energy isn't accumulating as much as we feared. But it could also be that these plates are just waiting for the right moment to release all this accumulated energy at once. And if that happens, man, the consequences would be felt throughout central Mexico, including Mexico City which is approximately 217 miles, 350 kilometers, from the potential epicenter. Now let me show you that this isn't just a Mexican problem. While we're looking at Guerrero, something fascinating and equally concerning is happening on the other side of the Gulf of California. On December 28, 2025, 
Exactly five days ago, the city of Susanville in California was shaken by an earthquake of magnitude 5.0 at 7.41 p.m. And it wasn't an isolated event. Look. In the following hours, the region registered a sequence of tremors, including one of magnitude 4.7. To give you a sense, the United States Geological Survey reported that just in the last 24 hours of December 19th, California registered 103 seismic events. 103! And look how interesting. The San Francisco Bay Area region, specifically the city of San Ramon, has been shaken by more than 80 earthquakes since November 9th. On a recent Friday night, there was a tremor of magnitude 4.0 there, the largest since this whole flurry began. The question everyone's asking is like, are these smaller tremors a warning of something bigger coming? Well, experts have divided opinions about this. Anna-Marie Balté, a seismologist with the United States Geological Survey, was very direct when asked about the possibility of a large earthquake in the Bay Area. She said, and I'll quote here because I found it important, that there will be a large earthquake in the Bay Area, but we cannot say exactly when or where, so it's necessary to be prepared for it. And look at the numbers she presented, because they're quite serious. There's a 60% probability of an earthquake of magnitude 6.7 or greater happening in the Los Angeles area by 2043. In the San Francisco Bay Area, 72% probability. When you put all of California together, there's a 48% chance of an earthquake of magnitude 7.5 or greater happening by 2043. Now take a deep breath. 7% chance of an earthquake of magnitude 8 or greater. Seems small, right? But when you're talking about an event that could literally reshape the landscape of one of the most populous states in the United States, 7% is a frightening probability. And there's an important technical detail here that many people don't know. After each earthquake, there's a 1 in 20 chance that it will be followed by an even larger tremor. But here's the problem. Only half of large earthquakes have an easily identifiable precursor tremor. The other half? They happen out of nowhere. What connects these two scenarios, Mexico and California, is something much larger than any country or political border. Both regions are part of the so-called Ring of Fire of the Pacific, a giant arc of 280,000 miles, 450,000 kilometers, that circles the Pacific Ocean and concentrates about 90% of the world's earthquakes and 81% of the largest earthquakes ever recorded. In Mexico's case, you have the Cocos Plate diving beneath the North American Plate in a process called subduction. This creates absurd pressure that accumulates over decades, until finally the rock can't take it anymore and ruptures suddenly and violently. In California, the scenario is a bit different, but equally dangerous. There you have the famous San Andreas Fault, where the Pacific Plate is sliding laterally against the North American Plate, like two wooden boards scraping against each other. And when this scraping jams for some time, energy accumulates until, well, until it can't take it anymore. Think with me for a second. We're literally living in an era where we have real-time monitoring technology, alert systems that can give us precious seconds of warning, buildings designed to resist tremors, and still, nature maintains this capacity to completely surprise us.